Are you considering the journey of becoming a CCIE but you're not sure how much it will cost you? Well, during my CCIE journey, I tracked most of the expenses I had and now I'm going to share with you. I hope that by the end of this video you have a more accurate idea on what to spend and most importantly, how much. Welcome to my channel, I'm Celesio, Cisco Certified Expert, CCIE for short. And in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about the true cost of what it takes to become a CCIE. We'll break down the expenses in four categories. First, we'll talk about the study materials that I bought. Then we'll talk about the exam fees. Do you know how many exams you need to become a CCIE? No? Don't worry, I'll let you know in a minute. We'll then talk about the travel and accommodation. And lastly, we'll cover the CCIE retake exam fees. Yeah, I failed the exam, but then I passed. Want to know how much it costs me? You soon find out. Okay, let's dive into the financial details of what it takes to become a CCIE and find out if you have budget for it. Okay, first thing first, we'll begin with the study materials. Now, I'm going to assume that you already have some uh, foundation around uh, the Cisco exams, more precisely the CCIE exam, but I'm going to just cover some minor details in case you don't know much about it anyway. So in order to become a CCIE, you have to pass successfully two exams. The first one is the written exam and this is just theory. You have questions and then you have to answer. Now, after passing successfully this exam, you'll be qualified to schedule the lab exam. The lab exam is an exam that can only be done in certain countries in the world. And it is a hands-on format, which means you have uh, some questions Plus, you have to interact with the devices, configure, troubleshoot, design, deploy, you name it. So those are the two exams that you have to take in order to become a CCIE. So during my CCIE preparation, I had to buy some resources and one of them was a computer and the computer cost me around $800. I actually bought two computers. One was a laptop and the other one was a desktop. Uh, unfortunately, I broke the laptop. So that's why it's not in the list. And the desktop, well, I had to upgrade in order to be more powerful to support the different scenarios, the different labs that I had to deploy. So then I had to also buy three additional hard disks and they were um, SSD hard disk and they cost me around $100 for each. So three, it cost me $300 at all. Uh, I also had to upgrade the RAM. So it cost me around $200 uh, to upgrade. And then uh, the computer was more powerful. Now, how much do you think I spent on books? Take your time. Well, I actually didn't spend a time on computers. And the reason why is that I've been in networking almost a decade now. And I started this path uh, the more traditional way. What does it mean? I started by taking class at the Cisco Net Acad or Cisco Net Academy. And since Cisco Net Academy, I believe since 2013, I was collecting different resources for Cisco. So I finished the Cisco Net Academy, then I became CCNA, then I became CCNP. So I already had a lot of resources related to Cisco and the technology itself. So I didn't see any need to buy an additional book or an additional resource related to the technologies that already existed. And to be honest, the technology didn't change much or didn't change at all uh, if we compare to 10 or 20 years ago. 
So that's the reason why I didn't buy an additional book. Now for those topics or technologies that I didn't have the resources, then I had to rely heavily on the Cisco documentation or the resources that were available on the internet, such as the RFC, the IEEE, uh, and these resources, they actually helped a lot because I was able to have a different perspective outside of the Cisco environment. And that's why you see there that I have the internet and it cost me around $864 during this three years period. Recall that I decided uh, to take the CCIE exam uh, back on 2018. So I'm considering this period from 2018 to 2021, uh, the year when I became CCIE. Now I also paid for a boot camp and it cost me $3,000. Okay, if we sum all of these, it was how much? $5,164. So it's around those values, but trust me, it was a little bit more than that. Now let's talk about the exam fees. As I said, you have to pass two exams. The first one, the written exam. Now the written exam back then you had to take at the Cisco authorized center, but the exam itself cost around $450. So once I passed the exam, I was qualified to schedule the lab exam and the lab exam cost around $1,900. It might be around $1,600, but because I'm in Portugal, I had to pay tax on these. So it's around $1,900, let's just say $2,000. So for exam, I had to pay around $2,000. $350. It's becoming a lot. Well, as I said, in order to take the lab exam, you have to do it on certain countries. So because of that, I took a flight from Portugal to Belgium and it cost me around $100, give it a take. And at that time, people weren't allowed to fly without taking the exam covid exam so i had to pay what around 60 dollars now to stay in the hotel for around one month and initially i stayed at a hotel but then i moved to a, a hostel and it cost me around three thousand dollars yeah plus the food and give it or take, it was around $1,500. Uh, and also I had to buy a chair and a monitor while I was in Belgium. Now, after taking the exam and this was my first attempt, yeah, I failed the exam. I decided to return to Portugal because I didn't want to be locked in Belgium. So I took a flight from Belgium back to Portugal and it cost me around $100. And again, I had to take the cough uh, exam. So plus 60 or something. So the total uh, for travel and accommodation was around $5,020. It's becoming a lot. So as I said, I failed the exam. So, which means that I had to reschedule another exam, but this time I just had to schedule the lab exam. So one, if you fail, you don't have to take the written exam again. You just have to schedule the lab exam. So the lab exam, again, I had to pay $1,900 plus the flight again from Portugal to Belgium around $100 and again, I had to pay to take the COVID exam, so it was plus $60. But uh, at this time, I didn't have to stay for too long in Belgium because uh, I wasn't sure that I would pass, but I knew for sure that I didn't have to stay in Belgium for that period of time. So I didn't have to stay for a week or a month. 
especially for that period because uh, some countries were uh, imposing some policies so I didn't want to be uh, locked in Belgium again so I had to leave Belgium in less than I believe 24 hours or so actually I think it will I had to I I wouldn't be allowed to leave the country without taking the exam if I had stayed for 48 hours so I arrived on one day and I left on the next day immediately so luckily I passed the exam and I only had to pay the hotel for one day or one night and then I took another flight and it cost me $100 and back to Portugal I actually remember that I had to take an exam uh, at the airport uh, because Portugal changed its policies on December 1st and that caught me by surprise at the airport so I had to take an exam at the airport that's the reason why I had to pay for this exam uh, the retake fees it was around more two thousand and three hundred dollars now how much did I spend total around fourteen thousand dollars eight hundred and thirty four and I gotta tell you it was more than this yeah, there are some expenses that I didn't include but I would say that the bulk of it I have included in this list so give it a take this is how much I spent and I hope that with this list you can have a reference on how to schedule how to prepare the budget for your CCIE journey I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next one Adiós.